Sánchez, bienvenida al Cato Institute. Gracias por pasar el Ioanni Sánchez, welcome to the Cato Institute. Thanks for spending some time with us during your visit to the United States. The first question I have is, they finally let you come to the United States and let you leave Cuba with some of your colleagues, while at the same time we hear reports of greater repression in Cuba. How should we interpret the fact that the regime is finally letting some Cubans travel abroad? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for this opportunity to visit Cato and to be able to talk to you. And yes, the Cuban government clearly is very concerned about international public opinion. In this case, the fact that some activists have been able to, to leave the, the country, I'm thinking, for example, of Soler, the leader of the Ladies in White, uh, Rosa Maria Payá, daughter of the deceased dissident, Elise Ávila, Orlando Luis Pardo and me. I think uh, it is an attempt in part to give a, an impression that something is changing in Cuba. The Cuban government is perhaps crafting a political strategy of letting a uh, few people leave the country with the intention, for example, of, of having them uh, lose some prestige on the world stage that they have been gaining in the island. Uh, that is wrong because, in fact, what I have seen is people shining. Uh, I have even seen people describe the real Cuba and help to do away with some stereotypes and some misperceptions. However, the repression of the, of the Cuban system has always been based on the concept of, of penalizing some and giving permission to others and vice versa. It is also a way to spread confusion. Uh, for example, we are commemorating the 10th anniversary of the Black Spring. During the Primavera Negra, the government imprisoned 75 opposition dissidents, but many of the opposition leaders who were very active at the time, such as Osvaldo Payá, were not sentenced. By using that repressive tactic, the government not only signaled its intransigence to the Cuban people, but also said to others that, well, there is no repressive logic here. You can do A and B won't happen to you, or you can do A and B and C won't happen to you. It is arbitrary. Exactly. Randomness is one of the most crippling concepts in Cuban repression. I also imagine that with the authorization of letting us leave the country, there was at some point the idea that we might never come back to Cuba, that one of the activists might decide to stay abroad. Sure. We've also heard a lot about the so-called reforms that are taking place inside of Cuba, introduced or at least announced by Raul Castro. What should we think about them, how important are they, and how much have they changed the life of the ordinary Cuban? Yes, the so-called Raul reforms are the most polished product of the official propaganda uh, towards the world and inside Cuba during the last few years. Uh, the truth is that some issues have gained flexibility, like the use of property, the housing market, uh, the possibility of acquiring a used car, the option to be self-employed, but, but these are all reforms that, that are two steps behind the reality. Reality was already making these things happen. All of us Cubans were already illegally buying and selling houses in the informal market. That is why Raul Castro's government has had to legalize everything he couldn't prevent from happening. That is an important point in order to understand Raul's reform. Uh, on the other hand, virtually no progress has been made on civil rights. Dissidence is still penalized in Cuba, just like free association and freedom of speech. So if I could define Raul's reforms in a sentence, I would say that um, they are adjustments to maintain power. Well, I guess your vision of Cuba is a vision of a democratic country with an open economy, a point much of Latin America has reached. However, we have seen that many democratic countries, or at least their leaders, have a particular attitude to the Cuban government and undemocratic practices in Cuba. What do you think about that hypocrisy? Yes. Uh, regrettably, many countries, not only in Latin America, but also in Europe, have chosen to privilege their economic interests when negotiating or trading with the Cuban government. There are governments that prioritize the fact that people from their country do business in Cuba and then, well, they, they keep from criticizing the Cuban government because they don't want to lose those opportunities and market advantages. 
We can also see other countries that stay quiet because they don't want to irritate the Cuban government, uh, which has a very belligerent diplomacy. Uh, it is very vociferous in international organizations. The truth is that for the people who live on the island, that kind of behavior gives us the impression of abandonment. It is uh, as if those who should speak for us, those who would have to speak out, especially governments of Latin America, which is our great homeland, prefer to keep quiet instead of pointing out injustice. Those are regrettably postures that remain in the memory of the people. What is your ideal vision of a free Cuba? I'm okay with a Cuba where all Cubans fit in. And not only with regard to physical space, because we have enough space for all. I imagine a Cuba where all viewpoints that exist fit in, because Cuba is a diverse island, as diverse as, as any other nation. Uh, one walks down Cuba's streets and finds all racial tones, uh, a mix or a mestizo island. There are also many ideological and political perspectives. So I imagine a Cuba where all these ideological and political perspectives can express themselves without being punished. Do you have a preference as to an economic system? I hope for, in Cuba's case, an island that has been controlled so much by the state, its economy is so regulated. I hope for a system that prioritizes creativity, uh, private enterprise, and the entrepreneur. So I believe that we have to liberalize the Cuban economy, right? Well, thank you very much for joining us, and I hope we can have a conversation again and organize an event like the one we just had at the Cato Institute, but in Havana. Of course, that will be a sign that many things have changed. So thank you, and I'll be waiting for you in Havana. Thank you.